Amen. Amen. This time we have a poem by Sister Anisha. An eulogy for Brother Hudson Andre Pitts. When I think of Brother Pitts and the many things he left us to bottle, I equate him to a sanctified, intellectual, keeping it 100, Church of God, Aristotle. This infamous philosopher gave so much to society that written pages cannot hold it all. Brother Pitts would teach, build things for people, support the most menial tasks. Well, as long as it didn't involve going to the mall. See, malls and Barbies had spirits, unbecoming of God's purpose for true Church of God saints. Neither were they able to help you dress right or promote self-discipline and godly restraints. As a father, the threat of the blister buster meant you were in real trouble. But ain't it funny how we've never seen the thing nor felt his rubble? The Church of God was his theme, mission, model, and song. The only way to travel and end life's journey at that heavenly throne. The revelations were so important. He'd pack and travel with all of his charts across oceans and conveyor belts, showing them to security without letting them part. God's work was so important, no matter what kind of service it was. Convalescent home, prison or prayer, youth or fellowship meeting, there he was. Brother Pitts despised false religion and worked to tear all sects and creeds down in Sunday school, family devotion, and testimony, and even if he was out of town. Practical, balanced, humble, and comical. Still such a spiritual man. You'd find him guiding, fathering, and mentoring any soul that he can. Men are always to pray and not faint, you would hear him say. Even when he was sleeping, your questions he'd answer right away. From a youthful Mr. Casanova to Brother Revelation Man, he was easy to talk to. And so many of us fell victim to all those healthy veggie juices he would brew. A real romantic, deep thinker, running this race without deviation. From the kitchen to the rooftop, a job was well done for its duration. A biker, artist, loving grandfather were just a few of his hidden talents. His humility, humility to his pastor, loyalty to my Shirley, and love for Betty Jean the Queen were oh so gallant. I can only imagine what happened after Brother Pence took his last breath. He probably opened his eyes with a big smile saying, I've made it through the sting of death. He probably tested out his new body, pain and disease free, by running around and jumping too. Then he probably asked to see Jesus asking him, can I talk about the revelations with you? So to the family left behind, Brother Pitts would want you to know, salvation is a wonderful thing. No matter how much he loved you all individually, he's not willing to leave his king. So if we want to see him again, he would want you to know you'd better leave sin. He has no regrets. He's lived his life as a true saint of God, so he made it in.
became Mary's little son. God said with a baby what he'd been saying all along. I love you. I want to be involved in your life. I want to touch you at your very point of need. I want to be a part of your days right where you are. So he came as a baby, and the baby grew, and he became a man, and he reached and helped and loved and healed and lifted and died. And today, if you could feel on your wrists and ankles the chains of every slave, of every dungeon in history, if you could feel on your back the steam of every whip, of every slave that ever took a beating, if you could know the pain of every war, if you could know the guilt of every husband that ever cheated on his wife, or every wife that ever cheated on her husband, every parent that ever abused a child, every child that ever betrayed a parent, if you could kneel with every mother beside every little five-year-old to know whom she had to explain why daddy doesn't love us anymore. If you could know the guilt of every murderer, of every liar, of every deceiver, of every cheat that ever lived, then maybe you would know a little bit about what was in that cup. And Jesus drank it all. And when he died, a war that began in the Garden of Eden between the loving reach of God and the pull of all the demons of hell came at last to an end. And that day, on the cross, when Jesus Christ said, It is finished. My friend, it was finished. And I don't know what kind of conflicts are going on inside your body, but I have wonderful news for you. The war is over. The victory's been won. And you can be free.
so we can reign. But he said, Brother Lee, when he was up on the cross, he said, it is finished. It's, finished. it's over. Yeah. Amen. We're able to reign in this life yeah. above all sin. Amen. Amen. We are reigning, sweetly reigning, Amen. far above this world of sin. Amen. Thank God it is finished. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. After high school, Brother Pitts transitioned and went on to serve his country in the United States military and the United States Navy. And at this time, there will be a special tribute for his time dedicated to the United States, the United States military tribute. After the presentation of the flag, there will be a loud volley. This banner of love and devotion, now being folded, is a living memorial of the courageous thoughts of our comrades, the one you came here to honor this day. The blue field represents the sky that overlooks our land and denotes the watchfulness of God the Eternal. The red stripes tell us of the blood, sweat, and tears that have been offered and conquered by our comrades' devotion to the responsible freedom of his country. The white stripes boldly proclaims the peace that he helped bring to our future generations. This is his play. This is our spiritual heritage. Receive it with the tears of our minds and the faith of our hearts. Amen.
On behalf of a grateful nation, the American Legion, I'm honored to present you this letter with your grandfather, our comrade, served his country so honorably. That concludes our service. Thank you for sharing. Present, aye. Order, aye. Mm -hmm. This faithful dedication to our nation, as well as for this beautiful tribute, Let's give a hand to Brother Pitts as well as <laughs> This time we'll have acknowledgments, condolences, and obituary. Sister Annette Williams. To the family of Mr. Hudson Pitts Sr. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is our prayers that this letter find you in good health, spiritually and physically. On the behalf of Kingdom Life family, we write to send you our very heartfelt condolence and prayers. Psalms 46.1 tells us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We pray that during this time of loss that you have grown to know God's grace love and healing power in an amazing way. The Kingdom Life Ministry family and I only imagine the depth of your pain and loss as you journey in life without our beloved brother. You have been and shall remain in our prayers. We believe that the Almighty God will graciously grant you and your family 
a grand revelation of his unfailing love and comfort and of his presence during this time. Please know that if it is anything you should need, we are here to show our love and support for you. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Revelations 14, 13. May grace and peace be upon you. And God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, humbly submitted Pastor Fred Parker and First Lady Parker. To the family and friends of Hudson A. Pitt Sr. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. May his peace and knowledge of his preparation be with you and may it comfort you to know that the thoughts and prayers of pastor and first lady, the ministers, officers, members of Second Missionary Church are with you during this difficult time. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelations 21.4 We extend our love and prayers to each one during this time of bereavement. Reverend Darius William, Senior Pastor. Church of God, Macon, Georgia. Sister Betty, the rest of the Pitts family and church, I was sorely affected when I heard the passing of our dear brother, Pitts. Our first contact was in Detroit, Michigan at Vermont and Hancock Church when I was a young boy. Later in the 80s, I moved to Jackson, Michigan, and we became the best of friends. He was a strong supporter of countless missions. We were privileged to start a small work at the YMCA in Detroit, Michigan. We traveled many years, and God blessed the work and added to the church. We remained friends even after I really relocated to make it. He'd become, he'd be coming down with his green juices and we'd go out for hours seeking the lost and dying. Brother Pitts was always about his father's business. The memory that comes to mind would be just before he married Sister Betty. During the Grand Cayman Revival, he came down to support me and was a remarkable blessing. To our delight, they honeymooned in Macon and the saints were honored to give them a southern style reception for him and his wife, Sister Betty. I came on, I can go on and on about the attributes and willingness of Brother Pitts. Even through his sickness, he was planning a mission to help rescue helpless souls from the enemy. I'm glad we were able to express to him how much we appreciated him. I learned so much from him. This is very difficult. Our loss is very great. But God, in his infinite wisdom, makes no mistakes. Sister Betty, we fellowship your loss and support you with our prayers. Family, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Church, let's get ready, go home and meet the Lord and Brother Pitts. Lovingly and prayerfully, yours in Christ, Prince E. Moon, Pastor, Church family from Macon, Georgia. To the family of Brother Pitts, upon receiving the news of the, present, of the passing of Brother Pitts, we're saddened, but also reflective, thinking of the impact of the loss of one of the pillars. Brother Pitts was faithful in many aspects of his life and exhibited by his passion and care. Brother Pitts came to visit in California and was intent on coming to be a blessing to the saints. He frequently prayed for us and wanted to come support us in a revival one year. After he continued to check on us, he didn't mind being in the trenches and praying for whatever needs and present when we appreciate that. Brother Pitts was, a, was faithful to his family as well. Sister Pitts, when she could come to California, would end up speaking about Brother Pitts and their relationship and shared. She would tell us stories about them that would have us all laughing each time. 
We came to appreciate and enjoy your family as a whole, and Brother Pitts was an awesome man and leader of it. Over the years, we have lost many saints who were pillars in the church for a long time. Brother Pitts is a part of that list. It is a reminder to us to appreciate those we love when they are near and honor their legacy when they are gone. We will attempt to do this with the same passion and zeal he had. Sincerely, Pastor Anthony Washington and Congregation. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13 reads, And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them, to the family of the late Hudson Andre Pitts. It is with heartfelt sympathy that we, the Church of God of Columbus, Georgia, extend our condolences at this hour of your lost. Brother Pitts was a soldier of the cross, lived faithfully for the Lord, and was a true man of courage. He will be missed for his steadfast faith, love, and determination so profoundly implied in his Christian walk with the Lord. To his wife, children, grandchildren, and all extended family, let us comfort your hearts in knowing that Brother Andre Pitts was a faithful servant of the Lord and was a man true to the cause of Christ. If we are faithful by God's grace, we will see him again. Our prayer is that God of all grace and comfort keep you in this trying hour. Humbly submitted, Brother Mark Burke. To the family of Brother Andre Pitts, the congregation in Jackson, Michigan, would like to send our heartfelt sympathy to the loss of your loved one. Brother Pitts meant so much to the congregation and to the church body as a whole. Brother Pitts came to us over 40 years ago and has worked diligently diligently and several capacities in the church. He was not too proud to serve wherever he was needed, from teaching the adult class to washing dishes late at night in the kitchen. He gave his life to promoting the church of God. He loved God and the things of God. <coughs> Family, Brother Pitts lived for this very moment. He would often testify in great detail about being taken to the hemisphere with God. He would speak of how God would show him things that weren't of this world and would exemplify great delight and strong emotion as he related this discovery. He would become so overwhelmed with the thought that he would abruptly stop and say, salvation is a wonderful thing. He gave his life to spread the word of God and teaching about the Revelation chart. He has now met John the Revelator. I can just see the delight in Brother Pitt's face when he met him. Therefore, family, although Brother Pitts has gone on before you, you would want you to continue on. Carry the memories of him with you in your hearts. When the road becomes dark and grief becomes heavy, cast your care on Jesus. He is waiting with outstretched arms to carry your burden. If you can be, if we can be of assistance to you, please do not hesitate to contact us. Prayerfully submitted, Frank Hampton Jr., Church of God, 140 West South Street, Jackson, Michigan. Mr. Hudson Andre Pitt, 73, was called to his heavenly home on Thursday, May 19, 2016, with his loving family at his side in Jackson, Michigan. Hudson graduated from Northwestern High School in Detroit. He went on to, in, to attend Ferris State University, where he majored in liberal arts. Hudson also served in the United States Navy. Throughout his life, Hudson has worked on various jobs, including U.S. Postal Service, the Department of Corrections, the City of Jackson as a crossing guard, and was the proud owner of Hudson's Roofing Construction Company. On November 29, 1969, Hudson and Shirley 
Anne Hornsberger, was united in holy matrimony. To that union were children were four children born: Sharina Latang, Tammy Chanel, Tatanisha Raynell, and Hudson Andre Pitts II. Hudson and his wife Shirley were members of Southwestern Church of God in Detroit before moving to Jackson, Michigan in 1977, where they became members of the Church of God in 140 South Street. Hudson was a faithful, devoted saint of God. His passions were studying the Bible and the book of Revelation, teaching his beloved Sunday school class, reading and studying the Bible, and drawing and painting the Revelation chart. Hudson also enjoyed ministering to those in nursing homes and prisons. Hudson had a big house and was known to offer his home to people in need. He was also loved to ride a bike. And on any given day, you could find Hudson riding his bike around Jackson. Once in his determination not to miss church, he rode from Detroit to Jackson. He enjoyed coming with healthy juice concoctions to the dismay of his family. However, if you were ever sick, he was right there with his green bean juice and ensured you that it would make you feel better. On Saturday morning, we would find Hudson in the kitchen making his famous biscuit boys for his children. Regardless of the mess in the kitchen, they enjoyed those warm, doughy biscuits with a side of jelly. Hudson's biggest joy in his life were his six grandchildren. He spent countless hours with them. He was in constant communication with the grandchildren, offering them advice, wisdom, prayer, and love. He even went so far as to designate a special day for them called Grandfather's Day. Hudson and his wife Shirley enjoyed traveling, performing missionary work internationally and domestically. Hudson used his carpentry skills to help build churches and dorms wherever there was a need. Hudson enjoyed trips to Honduras and Cayman Island. Hudson was a true saint of God. His testimony was salvation is a wonderful thing. He and his wife Shirley were active in the Church of God. They faithfully supported all meetings, including young people's meetings, street meetings, revivals, and fellowship meetings. Hudson mentioned many, many times, and he mentored young men who came to the Church of God. Hudson and Shirley were faithful to the end. In 2014, Hudson's beloved Shirley passed. Hudson spent time after her death traveling internationally and working for the kingdom. Hudson knew he was on borrowed time and put in even more, offered and spent time with his children and grandchildren. In April of 2015, Hudson wed Betty Goodloe. She was a great companion to him until the end. Hudson was preceded in death to Kenton Pitt, mother Lillian Pitts, father Hudson William Pitts, and wife Shirley Ann. Hudson is survived by his wife Betty. He is also survived by his loving children, Sharina Pitts, Tammy Pitts William, Damar, Tatanisha Pitts Worthy, Derek, and Hudson Andre Pitts II. Six grandchildren, Jakara, Tariq, Zaya, Zayan, Tylan, and Zayden, two grand dogs, Gutu and Max, siblings Carla Hill, Floyd, Devon Pitts, Renee Pitts, and Juana Pitts. Hudson's special friends were Brother Prince Moon, Brother James Johnson, deceased, special daughter Mary Willis, who affectionately called him Pa, Brother Tim Ellis, William Davis, Brother Lanny, Brother Lee, and Brother Frankie Hampton. This time the family has designated that they wanted certain people to give remarks. But we see he had many tributes, 
and a tremendous obituary, and we don't want to weary the family. Amen? Amen. So we ask those that do give remarks, take that into consideration. Your brother Tim Ellis, brother Frank Hampton, brother Lanny, sister Mary, brother Mark, and then myself. In that order. I met Brother Pitts while I was in prison in 2001. Brother Pitts is my friend. Brother Pitts helped me a lot in life. I wrote to the Church of God where it came up on a fifth Sunday and preached living free from sin. from a religious family, but I wanted to know about this living free from sin. I wrote to the church, asking if they send or, or somebody could write me. It ended up being Brother Pitts. And God knew what I needed. Brother Pitts is very direct. <laughs> very honest. Brother Pitts ended up starting to come up in 2002 to visit me. And I'm, you know, just from, from the perspective of where I was, I was looking for a guy to come up in a suit, tie, you know, Bible on his hand, whatever. Brother Pitts came up with suspenders, <laughs> loose pants, looking like old McDonald had a farm. <laughs> And, and he was giving me stuff like, um, you got a wife? I said, yeah, she divorced me. He said, you got a girlfriend? I said, yeah. He said, you can't have her. <laughs> you can't have her and be saved. So he was kind of like, yeah, I wasn't feeling him. For real. <laughs> and then he went, the next week he came, he hit me with the TV. He breaks every commandment in the Bible. Devil's operation. And I'm, I ain't got over the girlfriend thing yet. So it was kind of like, wow. But you know, as time went on and God worked with my soul and Brother Pitts continued to pray, ask the saints to pray for me. I heard when I got out that they were saying he would every service pray for Brother Timothy Ellis. And they said, who is Brother Timothy Ellis? So this was like 14 years ago, 15 years ago, when this was doing this. And I appreciate that, brother, because <laughs> when I got out, there was a funny story here, he, uh, how I had a job with Brother Pitts and lost it all in the same day. <laughs> brother Pitts said that uh, if a man don't work, he don't steal. He didn't use the Bible and say, he won't eat. He said he don't steal. So he gave me a job. He said just bring these shingles up on the roof. So the job was behind where I was living on the next street. And I walked over there and I asked the guys who was Brother Pitts. And um, he said he's up on the roof. So I go around the side of the house and look up on the roof. Brother Pitts sitting on the edge of the roof sleep. <laughs> I said, uh-uh. I can't do this. <laughs> Same day, some guy coming down the street, real adamant about, I want my money, and I ain't leaving until I get it. And I guess, I'm thinking, you know, he wasn't really talking to Brother Pitts, but he was talking to Brother Pitts. And Brother Pitts was still working and doing what he, he, he was going off, and I'm thinking like, okay, now, I hope I ain't got to put my hands on this guy. I just got out to penitentiary. <laughs> I ain't going to see nobody beat up my man. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brother Pitts was calling me. He said, I'm just going to call the police. I said, I know I got to go now. Because I ain't going to have no contact with the police. So I had the job and lost it all the same day. I said, Brother Pitts, I can't do that with you. <laughs> but even through that, me and Brother Pitts did many adventures with the gospel, going on missions. Even in my home, we had Bible studies in my home for many years. Um, I went to the nursing home. He said, this is what the Bible tells us to do. He said, if you've done this to the least of these, my brother, you've done it unto me. 
So we were, he was very encouraging. And he got down to last year. It was a privilege for me to get the honor to be his best man in his wedding. And then he got sick. I was just sitting back there thinking. When Brother Chris was going out of here, he was still saying, call Brother Tell. I love that man. He, he really helped me out in so many ways. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the grace of God and Brother Pitts. So family be encouraged. All he ever wanted for his family was you to live the Bible way. That's all he ever wanted for his children to be saved and know the Bible way. His grandchildren, that's all he ever wanted. So we just want to encourage you. Remember that. And I want to say this one last thing. You really never understand a person's full life until like it comes together like this. I didn't see all this in Brother Pitts until now. And it's a really beautiful thing. Brother Pitts goes back about 40 years. And I could always, uh, as a younger man, count on Brother Pitts to give me a job, you know, do whatever. I mean, that was, a, that was a, a constant. I could always depend on Brother Pitts for that. And in the end, I had the privilege being by his bedside that last month or so and massaging him and working his legs and just hoping him to get another day. And it was uh, it was something to see how, I don't know if we knew the end was coming or, I don't know, I was praying for healing. So my, my mind went beyond the pain. I said, God's going to raise him up. And that's what I saw. And I don't know what the other young brothers seen, but it was just a stream of brothers coming by trying to get that last little drop of revelation knowledge out of Brother Pitts. And I would rub and rub, and sometimes he'd be out, and I'd just keep rubbing. He, as soon as he opened his eyes a little bit, I'd say, Brother Pitts, what about that fifth seal? You know, <laughs> you rub a little bit more, Brother Pitts, tell me about this, you know, tell me about that. So many different ones were just there, just trying to get that little bit left from him. You know, maybe we was a little selfish, you know. But um, definitely enjoyed him. I never, out of all the years that I spent with him, I never felt as close to him as I did that last month. It was a bond that we got, and, me and Sister Betty and some of the other brothers were just there, just trying to do what we can do, you know, and it was not heavy at all, because that was our brother, you know. And uh, I was just thinking <clears throat> this morning, what was just one thing I could say that would describe Brother Pitts to me? And that was sold out. If you heard some of the things they said about Brother Pitts, a man that would drive, try to ride a bike from Detroit to Jackson just to go to service. Brother Pitts had a honeymoon when he married Sister Betty, you know, he didn't like go to Florida. He went to make it. There's nothing in making but the church. <laughs> the honeymoon. I'm like, Brother Pitts. So, Brother Pitts used to uh, go to the, to the care homes for the elderly. And uh, I was a student in a Sunday school class. We had a lot of you know, personal conversations before and after class. And he was just telling me, he said, Frank, you know, when, you, when, when, they, when people get Alzheimer's, it's like they lose their short-term memory. And they can only... Sometimes they, they can't have a conversation in the moment. They would talk about things way in the distant past or whatever they could remember long term. He says, so that's why in our Sunday school class, I have so many, like the first half an hour is all memory verses, you know. He said, because when I get to the point, if I get older, and I get to the point where I can't have a conversation in the moment, all I want to do is quote scripture. That's all I want to do is just quote scripture. So he's trying to just ingrain that in within himself, you know. And I, I just, uh, amazing, amazing person, you know. And, you know, myself and the family, you know, in this, in this time and day, there's a lot of spiritual confusion. But we don't never have to be confused because we've seen an example. And examples are always clear. You know, there's, there's times when uh, I would sit and I would talk with Pitts. And uh, I wouldn't get direct answers all the time, you know. But I knew he was going so deep. I said, he's going somewhere. And I knew, if not then, at some point, the things that he poured into me personally, was going to come back, and, and I was going to appreciate it more now and in the future than I did at that particular time. And, you know, uh, I was just thinking about him, and I said, if Pitts could leave me just one last word of instruction, it probably would be like, Frank, don't, don't cry for me, don't even shed a tear. He said, I, I, I finished my course, but the battle was still raging, so carry on. But Pitts, that's exactly what I intend to do.
to the family. We're going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to uphold that legacy. You know, and in the church of God, <clears throat> many times and often, we speak about some of the saints that went on. And there's a whole list of them. Brother Pitt's legacy is etched in the church of God. And I had, even though he's going to be gone, we're going to speak about Brother Pitt over and over and over again. That was a great example for us all. Amen. outside, he had a station wagon. I went outside, and a long ladder 
was attached to the top of the station wagon. I was like, oh, I don't know how to drive like that, you know. But he said, I'll teach you. I'll show you. And he, um, they lived on Mitchell Street. He would move her out the driveway, show me how to drive with a long ladder on top of the car. That was just one of the many things that um, about Brother Pitts. He was a friend. You could confide in Brother Pitts. And if you told him not to say anything, it wasn't going anywhere. He would pray. He was a faithful father. He loved his children. Loved them. He was surrounded for a long time with just three girls. But then came Hudson, the joy of his life. He loved Hudson. He said, I could find, he would look at his hands and he would say, I can teach these hands how to work and how to build and how to do different things. But after a while, that was fun when Hudson was little. But when he got a little bigger, Hudson wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> that wasn't for him. Also, um, Brother Piss was, uh, he was a loving husband. Anybody knew he would, he would just offhandedly just grab his wife and say, give me a kiss in front of everybody. Come over here, give me a hug. He was very affectionate and he wasn't afraid to show it. One thing that really stands out about me is Brother Piss was a spiritual man. He was saved to the bone. Brother Pitts, when he believed something, he stuck to it. I was looking through, um, just reading about some, some soldiers and heroes, and I ran across a part of a song that I feel best fits him, and I wrote it down. And it says, um, well, well, first, because everybody knows he was a revelation, he loved the revelation, I decided, I was looking and I was reading all week and trying to find something, a verse that really fit him. And this is the verse that I came up with. Revelations chapter 6, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him. And a crown was given him. And he that sat upon him, I'm sorry, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. For almost 40 years, I watched Brother Pitts. Yes. I stayed in that house. I lived in that house sometimes. I went on trips with them. I watched him be mistreated by people when he would do jobs. He would be in the rain, the snow, the sleet, and then people would not pay him. He did not take them to court. He would just give it to God. And God will always come through for him and reward him. So when I picked this scripture, it said he was given a crown. But at the end, Paul went out like a trooper. He had many crowns. He conquered sin. When death came his way, he was just he would straighten himself up. Even in his weakened condition in his frame, he would just stand his stuff up as if to say, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? He would fast. And I'm thinking, you need to eat. But he felt like if he gave up those things, then he would start letting down on other things. So he held it firm to the end. So a portion of the song said, heaven needed a hero. Someone just like you. Brave enough to stand up for what you believe and strong enough to follow it through. That was my pa. He was my hero. Thank you. Blessing me to be here this afternoon. Uh, Brother Pitts was definitely a dear friend of mine. Um, many times we would be laboring together. And Brother Pitts was a true soldier. He was a true soldier of the cross. Um, you know, he would call me many times before he got sick on a Saturday uh, morning and say, Hey, Brother Mark, what you studying? And we would get into the revelation. And, and uh, a little 15 minute, I thought it was going to be a 15 minute conversation. All of a sudden, we've been on the phone for two hours studying in the revelation. But... But uh, Pitts was a, definitely a wonderful friend. You know, we would labor. We're going over to the Cayman Islands, to Honduras. Uh, he loved the saints of God in Honduras. He really loved him and Sister Pitts. would go over there and, and just labor and just work with them. Uh, once Brother Pitts went over there and helped him on, some, on the roof and uh, laid some shingles. And he just did a lot. Whatever he could do, uh, he was just that ready man just to help somebody out. Um, you know, there was a young man named Brother Tyron. Uh, you know, when we first started going, he was about, you know, uh, 9, 10 uh, years old. And he graduated uh, from high school, was going on to college. But he was going to college over in Costa Rica. And even just about a month ago, Brother Pitts was trying to reach him. And uh, Brother uh, Hiram call, uh, Tyron called him back. 
And uh, he was able to make that connection. Brother Pitts, he, he was a warm individual, always wanting to reach out and, and help somebody. And uh, just those times together, there was one instance over in, in Honduras, uh, Brother Pitts, he, uh, you know, he, he loved to share the revelation. So he said, Brother Mark, he said, there's no revelation chart over here. I said, I know, Brother Pitts. He, I said, man, the people, they need to hear about the revelation. And he said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. The next trip, he brought his canvas, and he began right there in his room, start drawing the revelation chart. And about a day or two later, he was there in the, in the, uh, in the church building, raised up that revelation chart, and started teaching at the 3 o'clock after. There's only five people there. But he started teaching that revelation chart. Brother Pitts, he loved the church of God. The church of God meant more to Brother Pitts than anything else. He loved the standards. He loved the truth of the church of God. That, that's what it was all about. And Brother Pitts lived for that. You know, I was thinking, you know, Brother Pitts, he would teach so much. Uh, you know, he would teach on the red horse. He would teach how that red horse, he had a great sword in his hand. And he, uh, uh, the Bible says how that red horse rider, he was trying to kill and to uh, take the lives of the people of God. It talks about the black horse. The black horse was a symbol of apostasy and also the pale horse. But then when you get down to Revelation chapter number 19, the Bible says in the heavens opened and there appeared a white horse. And he that sat on him uh, went forth in righteousness, judging and making war. And the Bible talks about the white horse rider. But one thing that stuck out to me was the Bible says there followed him uh, armies in heaven clothed in white robes. And I, I, I can only imagine in my mind how on that Thursday morning about 9 o'clock in the morning, amen, the heavens opened and the, the white horses came began to come down. He said, now Gabriel, where are we going? He said, we're going to make a pit stop. Where are we going? Michigan, a, a, a chariot swing low, a swing low. We're going to stop and pick up Brother Hudson Andre Pitts. Oh, that Thursday morning, saints of God. Amen. I, I can only imagine when they reached the eastern skies. And, amen. The pearly gates opened. Amen. The saints were there ready to meet them. Amen. Brother Roger Burke and amen. Brother Kennedy and Brother Ron. Amen. Even our late their friend, Brother Keith Jones. And, amen. Even, amen. Uh, somebody was, uh, amen trying to get the choir uh, together Sister Pitts and all the saints uh, Brother Johnson and Brother amen, uh, 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 Sister Willis and all the saints that have gone on before and I can only imagine Brother Pitts stepped into those pearly gates of glory he probably looked around you know Brother Pitts did he stood up you know he, he ain't gonna start talking until he gets everybody's attention and I can only imagine the Lord gave him a voice that day. You know, Brother Pitts, I don't think he could sing too much. <laughs> but I can only imagine him saying, Oh, church of God, I love thy horse. Saints of God, Brother Pitts loved the church of God more than anything else. God. And saints of God, our hearts desire that we stay faithful. We want to make it over to the other side. Amen. To see all the saints and see Brother Pitts as well. To the family. Amen. The wife, the children, the grandchildren. Amen. Even the local congregation, Pastor Hampton, all the saints of God. Amen. By the grace of God, one day we want to live so we can see our dear friend, Brother Pitts, again. May the Lord bless you. In life, you're blessed to be able to have a total mentor. <clears throat> And uh, when I got saved, I was playing ball, and I was with one of the low trotter affiliates. We would travel to different countries, and we would go all over the place, and we would practice. And once I gave my life to God, it was really at the prime of my life. And um, one of the great challenges of, of a young man getting saved is what do you do with your time? You have service a few days a week. But you had so much time on your hands. And that's when your boys came. That's when females would call. That's when you were on the court. You're up in St. Cecilia, Detroit. You're going over to Grand Rapids to do this. You're going to different places. And I got saved. And I had all this time on my hands. And people would call and coaches would call. And 
And I needed something, and God knew it. If I was going to stay safe, I needed something to help me. And not long after I got saved, Brother Pitts, and we'd already been close before I even got saved, but we connected. And every Sunday, all day, we'd go upstairs, he'd just stay with me. During the week, Tuesday, Thursday night, Come and sit with me in the basement. Appreciate him when we didn't understand something about him. And he just wanted to make sure that your foundation is solidly. Don't cut no corners, man. Don't do nothing questionable. Be completely humble. They talk about he loved the church. He loved Brother Pitts loved Jesus. Yes, Brother Pitts loved Christ. Yes. Brother Pitts wanted to be the epitome of what Christ was. He said, Lee, Christ is the man that every man want to be like and every woman want to have. He said, Lee, be like Christ. Period. And why he loved the church is because the church is the bride of Christ. Christ don't want to come with no blemished, wrinkled up, tattered up bride. That's why he loved the church. Because he loved his Christ so much. He would stand up when he was laying my foundation. And I couldn't take this when I was young, but I understood it later. And he would stand up and he would just say, and many saints, man, I remember this. It wasn't, it's a beautiful thing to be saved. Yeah. But deeper than that, he used to irk me when I was young. He would stand up right there and he would say, the church of God is not for the Hamptons church. Now, mind you, I'm a child. I didn't have understanding. And I'm thinking, my father gave himself. He prayed night and day. He fasted. Why are you all at work? Why are you doing it? If somebody's sick, he's sick. He don't even go outside. Huh? He gave himself. He don't hardly eat, man. He's going to come and get you. You don't understand him, man. People dog him, but they called him, man. He can't go to a grocery store because he bought the free from seeing messages to Jackson and no denominations and worldliness. Why would y'all, how could Brother Pitt say something like that? He don't understand. This man gave himself. He could be anything in the world, a scholar. He could be a world famous boxer, an entertainer. He could have been a millionaire, but he gave himself so hardly make any money at all. Don't you understand? My... But what he was telling me was this thing is way deeper than a man. When you get this thing down in you, it's way deeper than a man. It's a foundation. Because one day, if God delay is coming, that man is going to be gone. And if your foundation is in him, then you're going to be gone right with it. But if your foundation is found in the pool of rock, then that rock is and you will be able to go all the way. I appreciate the foundation that he allowed me to sink deeply in the things of God. And as we conclude, we want to say thank you. Brother Pitts came in and him and Sister Pitts, they brought me in to the children. If the church at 140 West South Street was to have a Mount Rushmore, so to speak, Brother Pitts and Sister Pitts would be on it. My Lord, my Lord. The way they gave themselves day and night for the furthest of this gospel. Thank you, children. I know what it's like when your grandchildren and this person wants their grandfather, wants this, that, and the other, and you hear he's got so and so's child over here, and your mother got so and so child over here, and so and so over here. I know what it's like. It hurts. And many times, the same people that you give yourself to don't fully respect or appreciate what you've done. And all those things, I know what it's like. But I want to thank every one of the children. Tammy, appreciate you. You are blessing you, Brother Pitts. Sister Pitts. Uh, uh, Tiny, I'm sorry. Tiny first, Tammy. Tiny, you are a blessing. A tremendous blessing. College graduate and all this other stuff. But he's like my father. I didn't know my father didn't, I didn't know he knew everything, anything I've ever done. He would even, didn't would even care about for the most part. He never would say a whole bunch of stuff to me. One day he's cutting somebody here and I come in the back door. And he's in there talking about, yeah, yeah, he's about to graduate from this and he's doing this and he's this and they want him to die. And they were, I'm sitting there like, man, what in the world is he talking about? He didn't know I said, I'm in another one. And then he said my name. I'm like, man, well, that generation sometimes, they wouldn't heap a whole bunch of accolades, but they meant it deep down on the inside. But the pits loved Tammy. 
Every one of your she's a oh, she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna, what you got going on. Tammy, take care of it. Tammy's the smartest thing. Tiffany, forget, forget Brian Gumble, forget uh NC, <laughs> NC, yeah, forget uh CNN and all that. Tammy is loves everything that you accomplished in your life. And Hudson, you are everything. Just like Brother Pitts took me in, you did too. Right there from day one. He loved and, and Sister Mary said Hudson didn't like to do stuff. Hudson had everything Brother Pitts had, the intellect as well as the know how to fix stuff. Hudson could do it all. Hudson, you were a blessing. He loved you, man. Appreciate every one of the time. And I told you, for you to come in when you did. Yes. For you to yes. come in when you did. Yes. Amen. For you to be there and him to see you walk down that aisle. Yes. Come Amen. Out. Amen. Let the saints know I'm home, saints. I'm home. With the testimony you gave a few weeks ago. I want to be everything the old saints were. And that's what we need. New pillars in the church of God. Grandchildren, we love you. He loved every one of you guys. And the father, the son-in-laws. Damar, we call him Dudu, one of the cross, greatest crossovers in Jackson's history. Thank you for loving his princess. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And we're Derek. Derek. He loved him. Derek Lee is one of the best cooks in his own cooking. He can do that. Derek can cook. Derek, Derek. He loved you, Derek. We appreciate you. Grandchildren, Jakara, Tariq. He tried to make it with Tariq after your graduation, man. But he's going to be there. He's going to be there, man. He wanted all you guys to be preachers of the revelation. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> this time, we got the church got quiet. So, um... I just remember laying on the floor with him. We'd just be reading scriptures, reading the Bible for hours and hours and hours. I'm just like, man, I'm hungry now. I'm thirsty. Like, I mean, <laughs> and then he was, okay, you want something to drink? Okay, yeah, I get some apple juice, some grape juice, you know? No, the vegetable drink. I'm like, the vegetable drink? What's in the vegetable drink? Oh, we got um, dandelions and uh, leaves and flowers and stuff. I said, is that even edible? Like, I mean, can I drink this? He's like, yeah, go ahead, I'll make you feel better. So I'm okay, 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 let me, let me just try this out, make you happy, you know. I take a sip, I'm like, what is this? You be drinking this every day? You drink this every day? Yeah, it's good for you, it's good for you. I'm, I don't know if it's good for me, it's good for you, but I can't drink all that. It's just, I don't know, but that was just what he did, so. That was him, but I love my grandfather. He was always there for me. You know, I was going through some tough times, like um, the brother man said he was um, going to prison and he helped him out. I was gone for a couple months and my um, grandfather, he was just there for me. You know, he wrote me every single week and just got me through. Without him, I don't know what I would've did because he really got me through. And, um, and while I was in there, I know my mom had told me he was starting to get sick. And I'm just like, God, please, you know, I'm reading my Bible, I'm reading my scriptures, you know, I'm writing him. I'm like, just Lord, please keep him here till I'm out. Cause I can't handle losing him while I'm in here, you know? So I just want to thank God for, you know, letting me be able to spend time with him before he left. And, you know, he did his little um, revelation charts and stuff. And he wanted me to help finish it with him. But I've been, you know, I've been working and stuff, trying to get myself together. Because I told him that I was going to get myself together, and I did. And I'm just glad that I made him proud. That I just made him proud, and I did it, you know. Just go through hard times, but I made it out. But I'm going to finish that chart like he wanted me to. I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to keep it till I die. And I love my grandfather, y'all. Yeah. I'm one of grandfather's um, grandchildren. My name is I. Worthy. And um, it's been a the opportunity to spend with my grandfather all this time before he left this world. So, yeah, some things I was looking for mm -hmm. to do with him, like hunting, and uh, but some things I did with him, especially on Grandfather's Day, 
I went fishing with him. And um, all this time we would be on a boat. And it was me and Don. But um, it was just me, Tay, and um, this other friend. And um, we'll be waiting for a fish. And I was like, where are the fishies at? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Grandpa, I think I caught one. He's like, come on, pull it up, pull it up. And then when I pull it up, I'm like, there's nothing. I'm like, he's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, where did he go? That's not fair. And then when he, when he was like, catch a fish, he would get one. I'm like, how did you get that? Because I pulled him up. I'm like, I'm like, I pulled him up too, but he left. He left me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's, he's like, oh, it's golf patients. Like, he's golf patients. I'm like, oh, okay. And then um, I caught one. I'm like, hey, Grandpa, I caught one. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and um. I'm just glad I spent that time with him. Even though I was going some tons of times, so we have to go to grandma's. So I'm like, okay. And then um, I was talking about these times I had. So he said, I've been praying for you. I'm like, you've been praying for you too. And I was saying how many tough times I had with him. And he said, um, just keep on going on. He was a great encouragement to me and a great inspiration. And um, That he passed away. I was always, I always remember my grandfather. And I keep on reading my Bible, reading the scriptures. That's all I have to say. Hi, my name is Amy Murphy. I'm the youngest of his group child, so I already know him. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him. I barely know him. I, mean, I used to go there all the time. But, you know, he used to tell me stories. I that time we all went to Olive Garden. He was there praying. Zion Worthy, um, and I'm Zion's twin. Um, I'm gonna miss grandfather a lot. You know how I went to his house. He prayed for us. He read his stories from the Bible. Um, he took us to um, go shoe ball and arrows at some place. You know, I'm gonna miss him a lot. That's all I gotta say. Oh, I love my grandfather very much, and I remember him calling me every day and stuff. He's like, Taylor, Taylor, are, are you reading your Bible? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm reading my Bible. He's like, did, did you read the part where Jesus arrived from the darkness? And I was like, I was like, yeah, I read that part, grandfather. And I remember one day he was, we was sitting on the couch and we was talking. And he was like, Taylor, I remember one time I was, I was in the darkness of my life with my sickness, sickness and all that. And he was like, but God got me through. He gonna get you through. And I love my grandfather very much and everything he did for me. I'm Tariq. I usually don't do this type of stuff, but, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm relaxing one night, you know, I'm put some popcorn in the microwave, about to watch a movie, you know. See my phone vibrating, it's from grandfather, you know, I'm like, oh boy. Right, you know what it's going to be? At least 30 minute max conversation. <laughs> Take my phone upstairs in my room. I left some popcorn in the microwave. Next thing you know, there's smoke everywhere in the kitchen. I'm getting screamed at by my mom. 
conversation with Lisa Howard I have, yo. I, I have school in the morning, too. I didn't want to be rude and hang up. But, so I told him, Grandpa, I gotta go. Wait, wait, I got another story for you. <laughs> you know, I was like, I like this character, you know. I'll be leaving his house, but like, here's $20. What's that for? Just to have it. I'm like, all right. <laughs> he always had words of wisdom and stuff to say, always praying for me, you know. And I love him. That's all I have to say. Hey. My name is Shereen. I'm Brother Pitts, uh, Andre Pitts' oldest daughter. And I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Um, especially want to thank the saints that were there for my dad. I care for him in his final days and hours. Appreciate Brother Hampton and Brother Lee and um, Brother Tim and different saints that have always been there for my parents, my dad and my parents down through the years. And um, this has just been a very, very traumatic, painful event for our family, seeing that my mom had just died uh, two, two years, one month, 25 days before he did. Um, but um, God has a, has a plan. Think, think about the times my dad used to always talk about. Remember we used to be on the Amtrak going from Detroit, coming to Jackson, um, when we, before we moved to Jackson in 77. Um, I was only about three or four when my parents started coming to the Church of God. And he used to say, remember we used to be on the Amtrak eating those pancakes? And, and I, every time I get on this Amtrak, I think about my dad and those pancakes. We used to always eat going to the Detroit, but my dad he was a faithful saint. He believed in what he, um, he stood for what he believed in. He didn't waver at all. I think everything pretty much was said by the um, different ones. But we love him, and um, I came up with this poem that I just wanted to read up to my dad from us and our family. Daddy, as we stand here today with our hearts filled with grief and pain, we have to remember that our Creator makes no mistakes, for there is no death. For death is just a term that we use to describe a soul trans transitioning from this earthly realm into eternity. The comfort in your passing is knowing that as you took your last breath here in this physical dimension, your soul happily exited your body with ease and grace. You move through a space of eternity that is filled with joy, peace, beyond understanding, bliss, and unconditional love from the light who is God. Your pain and sufferings in this life are now over. You loved and cared for us, your children and grandchildren. You gave up yourself unselfishly to make sure souls were led to Christ. You made your mark on so many lives and loved ones to ensure that they knew the message of God's love. As you went through your final life review, uh, starting from birth until this moment, you were joyful that you stood for what you believed in and held firm to God's principles and standards for your life. There is no time where you are now. So to Mama, you basically arrived in heaven shortly after she was called home on March 24, 2014. And as the rest of us are forced to go on with the lessons that life has yet to teach us, we must remember that we are all equal in God's and His angels' eyes. Whether we are great, small, talented, disabled, leaders or followers, saints or sinners, we are all precious and carefully watched over. God's love will never fail us, ever. Daddy, you now join Mama, Grandma Jane, Grandma Pitts, and Grandpa Pitts, Grandma and Grandpa Woods, Uncle Kenny, your ancestors, beloved saints, Church of God saints, and many loved ones from all the ages of time. You deserve your reward for your hard labor, faithfulness to God, and for being an example for all to witness. We feel you and Mama's love, for love is the only thing that will last for all of us after a lifetime of chaos confusions and misunderstandings. We will love and cherish you both forever. Our love is eternal, for we are love. God is love, and love is the solution to all things. We await the moment when we will see you both waiting for us, when our own purpose in this life has once been fulfilled. Until then, your, mom, your memory and your legacy will live on in our hearts and in our minds. Goodbye, Daddy. Tatisha, the baby daughter, and I was supposed to be the last child, but they decided to have another called Hudson. But yes, I'm still kind of holding that. So everyone that knows me, when I was little, I was very devastated 
that I was getting kicked out of my spot. But um, I want to thank all the saints and Brother Hampton for being there for my family. I want to um, thank Sister Betty for being there for my our father in his last year of his life. Um, the brothers that were right there with him, Brother Tim, Brother Frankie, Brother Lanny, um, and a few others, we really appreciate um, the love and support that you have shown to my father and also to my mother. It just sometimes seems unreal that we were just here just about two years ago um, celebrating my mother's life, and now we're back here celebrating my father's. It's a lot that I could say about him, and many people have said things, and a lot of things have been spiritual, but we lived with him. So we, we got to see all of it, you know? We got to see all the things that he did. I mean, everybody knows his Brother Pitts, and Brother Pitts liked to, you know, help out and wash the dishes in the kitchen and all that kind of stuff, but Brother Pitts also liked to do things at home. And my, you know, I don't know how my mother did it because that would be a test to me because my father would leave the kitchen cabinets open. He would come in there and make a lot of mess. And after my mom died, you know, we had to come down here and help him. I would come in the house, it would just stuff everywhere. The kitchen cabinets, that was probably my biggest test. Like, why can't you close the kitchen cabinets? Like, I don't understand that. I mean, it's just cabinets. You take something out and then you close them back. He would never close them back. So we come in the house and we just start having to pick things up, put things back. But even in the midst of that, though, he, you know, when he cleaned, he could clean and actually make it straight. I'm like, why can't you do that all the time? You know, my mom would say that, you know, you, we know you can do it, but he just, you know, oh, I'll leave it there, don't touch it. If I put it there, don't leave it there, don't, don't touch it. He didn't like people touching the stuff because he couldn't find it. But see, the rest of us, we were pretty, like, organized. We like things to be very neat, you know, and decisive. But he just, you know, was like, if I leave it there in the same spot, I need to have it right there in that same spot, so when I come back looking for it, it's right there. But, you know, even despite all that, you know, all he, he was a great father. He was a great husband to my mother. You know, like many have mentioned, him having a disability, sometimes that can be hard because as kids growing up, you know, people would tease us, oh, you know, your dad rides a bike and all that, but you know what? He was a really good father. Amen. You know, there's some people that would walk away and say, oh, that's too much because he didn't have that disability until later on in life. But even through that, he found a way to be a man and to work and to have a hustle. And some people will probably just sit out and collect a check and like, oh, you know what, I have this disability so I can just sit home and just let my wife go to work. And although my mother worked, and she loved what she did. You know, my father was still, you know, that provider where he found that job. He found something that he used his hands, and that's what he always told us, you have to have a skill. It doesn't matter if you have a college degree or not, you have to have a skill, you have to have a trade, and that's things that he instilled into all of us. And it's just those are just things that I admire about him, that just despite things that was not going his way, he was always humble about it and said, you know what, I'm going to find a way to make it work. And he did. One thing that we kind of joke about is that, you know, the pit side of the family have what we call the pit's fire, where they can easily get riled up. And it doesn't take a lot to get them riled up. And my father was the same way. However, he decided to take that pits fire, as we call it, and use it for God. So when he started getting riled up about silly things, he would get riled up for this truth. And he would, you know, go on fire for God. So he took a character that made people like, oh, you know, they just got to add it. He took it and he used it for God. And he gave everything that he had for this truth. And it's just sometimes I, I look back and I'm just like, man, I wish I would have more time because after I got saved, you know, I started... <clears throat> having questions and he would he called me every day you know Todd are you praying like you know and talk and just give me encouragement and then I started to say okay you know I have questions and who's well who better not to ask but my dad and you know sitting down there being able to ask some questions and he didn't give you the answer right away like he like I asked him a question I'm thinking okay I'm gonna get it in you know five minutes so we can talk about something else but he's like Okay, go to the scripture. Then go to the scripture. And he but he was very in-depth in his answer. I got my answer, but he gave it to me in such a way that instead of just telling me, he made me kind of go look and find it. And those are things that I am going to cherish, you know, for the rest of my life. You know, his memory and his legacy will live on. Um, we ask that you just continue to pray for our family because although it's just my dad lying there, it feels like they're both just died just again. And for us, you know, just 
losing our mother just less than two years ago, it, it feels, that loss feels even greater now with both of them being gone. But yeah. I know that God is definitely helping us and he's definitely keeping us and we will continue to um, remember us in your prayers. We were driving in this morning and um, I was going down the, the street to Jackson and they did me miss just about every single neighborhood, every street that I rolled down was probably a house that he had worked on. So a roof he had done, chimney he had flashed, a drywall he had done. You know, I remember I worked with him, I can't even remember the first job we did, it was probably before I can even remember. Um, he would take me on those so many jobs and you know, sometimes he'd let me put on the roof, sometimes he'd put me on trash detail, you know, he'd give me different things to do. I mean, it wasn't bad, he made about five bucks. Eight years old, that was pretty good money for a kid. Um, so he was pretty generous with that. I might only work about four hours a day, but anyway, I was in a uh, I was in a job interview not too long ago, and this particular company, it's a they work for industrial side clients. So they don't work for like Pepsi and BMW. They work for people like um, Cat and Carhartt and so on. You know, building companies and contractors plumbers, roofers. So the guy, he was like, you know, a lot of kids come out of college, they're not really interested in what we do in our, our work, our industry is kind of mundane, kind of boring. Um, he said, well, are you interested in what Is this a job to you? Just, you know, that kind of thing. I said, well, you know, my father was a self-employed uh, contractor for years. You know, I grew up around, hanging around lumber yards, following behind him in the hardware store, him and hardware, Lowe's, Menards, um, you know, hanging out at the job site. So I know how to speak the language. I know how to, you know, speak um, to to what the, the work is. And I also understood that he was very different from um, a lot of what I might call the, the modern modern construction workers because he had a very craftsman feel to it. He said, "Listen, I'll take my time and I'll do the job. You know, if it takes me two months." But I'm going to go every part of this roof, every part of this gym, every part of this house. I know every part that I touched. So if there's a problem, I can go and I can go right to it. But there was rarely ever a problem. People put roofs on their house, they would come back years later and never have one single leak on this roof. I never had one problem with this issue after he got it done. He used to know me because he would do such good work for other people. And then, you know, around the house, he would do like random duct tape jobs. It's like, Dad, this is where we live. I mean, Oh, yeah, just grab that piece of lumber, throw it up there, you know, we're good. You know, I mean, it's like, can we get some, some quality work around you? Nah, we're good, you know. So, and um, I was driving down Francis Street, coming to the church, and looking up at the house that was one of the last ones we worked on together. It's a steep roof, it's a very straight, a, you know, straight up and down A-frame. And he, we had done some work on the inside house, and he was um, he, uh, he was going to the roof. So he got the, the ladder out, he went up there, and he was climbing all over the roof. And he was about maybe almost 70 at this time. So, I mean, this was almost a near 70-year-old man. He was climbing up on that thing just like a mountain climber, just like he had never even had a day off. He just jumped right on and climbed all over. And it's a steep roof. You can't just climb up that just like he's not like a flat roof. You just walk up and down. So he was climbing up, knocking the scaffold down, putting it on and everything. And he came back down to the ladder where I was waiting. I had been watching him. He was like, okay, it's your turn. I was like, for what? To go up. I was like, for what? To go up. So I said, all right, I'll hear you. I went up, grabbed a, you know, one of the, the, uh, the footings, went up a little bit. I said, keep going. I said, I went up. I said, no, keep going. Put up another rain, went about halfway. Like, you know, I'm good. I, I'm up on the roof, Dad. It's, the scaffolding works. It's not falling. We're safe. We're good. It's testing him to get down. I'm like, no, keep going. Keep going. Go all the way to the top. I was like, why? why? He's like, I gotta know. He said, I gotta know if you can climb all the way to the top. I kept on climbing. Got all the way up there. One of the hardest things I ever had to do was climbing that steep roof. And I swung over the, the crest or the crown of that thing. And I think for a moment, I really understood something about my dad that I never had before. It's like a, a climber who climbs Mount Everest or a pilot who 
climbs up at 45,000 feet, the astronaut taking his first spacewalk. It's something that only they know about, something that only they can understand. They can't tell you about it, they can't write about it. You have to experience for yourself. I remember thinking about that and I said, he knew that I had to do that for myself. I had to learn how to climb for myself. It was something you couldn't tell me about, all the devotions, all the stories, and all the many nights he would stay up talking and you know, mom would be patting her hand on her leg, all right, it's time to pray, Andre, because the kids have to go to school tomorrow, and keeping us up late, and, you know, and he would just keep going on, always getting louder, I used to wonder, does it matter the neighbors hear us? <laughs> He would get he would get loud like okay we're sitting right here in the room everybody can hear you perfectly dad nope he'd have to go top 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 of his lungs he's like listen dad is the pastor at home he's the priest at home I'll get my message right now I'll sit down and be quiet I don't care if the White House calls me glory so anyway but <laughs> all of that and it was really that instance that in practice because. He did it himself first, so he knew I could do it. And he knew if he just pushed me a little, if I could just step out a little, that I could make it to the top. So, <clears throat> I know we didn't always see eye to eye on a lot of things in life, and even we were talking not too long ago about some different things that, you know, that, was, that was happening in life. And, you know, he was kind of, in his usual kind of, you know, uh, kind of nonchalant way, different things and so on. But I really appreciate those lessons, and I'm going to keep talking. My dad was my heart. After my mom died, my sisters and I vowed that we would take care of him. As she would. And I remember him saying, Tammy, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to pay a bill. I don't know. And we just decided, Daddy, you have nothing to worry about. Many a times I worked the morning show at WILX, and many a times he just didn't understand the concept of time. And I'm in my show, in my booth from 6 to 7, and he would always call at 6.30. And, hey, Tammy, what you doing? And I'm like, Daddy, I can't talk to you. I'm in the ear with my anchors. I'm in my show. I'll call you off. All right, call me right back did this every week. He still didn't get that my show ended at 7, that he could call me after 7. And I was thinking about, oh, wow, I would give anything to get one of those phone calls. My dad showed me how a man should treat a wife. He treated my mom above. I never saw him call her out of her name, abuse her. If she gained a little weight, I love all of this. <laughs> Nothing scared my dad. My dad was the one, if we got a bat in the house, he would catch it if it was a mouse in the house. I remember one time I was 11 and my mom was going to take all of us, all of her children, to Disneyland. She was going to California for a meeting. My dad wasn't going because he worked during the summer months. And I remember it was around 6 o'clock in the morning. He was always up early praying. And I was going to a babysitting job across the street. And I needed to get my shoes out of the closet. And I opened up the closet. And there was a mouse in there. And I remember slamming the door and I'm screaming. And he's sitting on the couch. And he looked at me through the French doors. And he started giggling. And he said, well... You wanted to see Mickey Mouse, didn't you? <laughs> so there's your Mickey Mouse. And I'm sitting there looking at him, are you serious? You know, and I remember my mother had to come down the stairs to tell him to get the mouse out so I could... <laughs> so I could go. Um, you know, the last few, the, after, after my mom died, you know, we were determined that my dad wouldn't have to get on the bus to go to a grocery store to do anything. Oftentimes, you know, we, I would leave work, he would call, and I'm like, oh, what are you doing? And he would say, oh, I'm going to go out to Walmart. Okay, Dad, I'm on my way. I just worked all night long, going to jump on the highway just to take him to Walmart, just to take him to the bank. And this was my sisters and I several times a week, wherever he needed to go. We took him. He, he 
it's almost like the rules became reversed. He became almost like one of my children. I loved him so much, I fiercely protected him. I wouldn't let anyone say anything about him. You know, he was everything to me. And I, this last month, it, it was just the fear in all of us is he going to make my son graduate next week. And we just kept saying, oh, Dad, you just got to make it. You just got to hang on. And he kept saying, can I give Tariq his gift to her? And he kept saying, no, no, can't do that. He didn't make it. But I know he made happen. I was in a room when my dad passed. And I wasn't even supposed to be there that day, but I was there. I just felt that I needed to go and see him because I was actually going to go come and see him on Saturday. And to, to be there, to have Brother Hampton to pass and your pastor is praying you into heaven. That was the best thing I could have ever witnessed. Thank you, Jesus. And I appreciate Brother Hampton yes. for coming with me cold. I love my dad. And I'm going to miss him. Even though he called every single day. He was the type that would call and call just like my mother until you answer. Even if I was mad about something, he would still keep calling. Praise God. You know, making sure that he knew that we were loved. My dad's, someone started singing it before, my dad's favorite song was the Church of God. He sang it with great gusto, off key. Sometimes it would just be so annoying, he would just get in your face and just sing it loudly. <laughs> so at this time, we're asking everyone to sing his favorite song. It's a blessing to be in a congregation in which you have examples. The children are bringing out. And I do want to say that those that do get married later in life, still have to honor those vows. And as Todd just said, to see Sister Betty there, you would have thought that she had been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Just appreciate the example that we were able to see from Brother Pitts at the end of the transition, but also Sister Betty every hour on the hour. Mm -hmm. Everything that was needed. Sometimes you look at it, what have you been married for 50? Well, if you say I do, I do means I do. And I appreciate so much the love he had had as well as the love she had had. This time, we do have Brother Pitts' favorite song, his anthem, and the church got quiet.
me to extend this. You know that you were really in full on and family had undergone a lot. So we'll take the cognizance of that fact. And uh, we, however, we would like to have a few remarks from a pastoral perspective. So that we turn to uh, the book of uh, Second Timothy, chapter number four. A few half points, and God bless you. Yeah. I don't think that I can do anything to add a distract from already. Instead, we are uh, going to. I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, henceforth, there is laid up for me. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, right. shall give me at that day. Mm -hmm. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. All right, shall we uh, go into this, please? Number seven said, uh, and it contains uh, perhaps my thought. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Uh, and now I'm ready to be offered up. This is our focal thought. I'm ready. Uh, this is a many faceted word. Some um, in terms of one way, some another. But uh, I have kept my faith. That's the underlying fact. And only because of that, I'm ready. Uh, uh, people make a, a hobby horse out of the wood ready, especially at uh, funerals. That's quite realistic, but I knew. But now, I was there with Brother Pitts almost incessantly. And uh, the last day of his life, his wife called me, we were entering into a service of stairs, and uh, he, he called me. I went there. And he had sensed a kind of a faint feeling. And uh, I did not, was unable to interpret that. And so we began to converse with him, quite clear in his perception. I mean, alert, and, uh, uncomplaining as usual. And so, anyway, um, there was something unusual about this event that I cannot say in all of my about 60 years, that uh, it's quite like that. Really. Now, uh, we know that it's feministic to put everybody in heaven and say that that is the other, all the accolade, accolade, and all that kind of thing. But uh, I can say with affirmation that we're this way. Not because we said, not because we're part of this congregation, but there are a lot of factors that are involved that uh, implies readiness. It's more than being a church member, it's more than uh, having some good moral uh, aspect of your life. But um, I followed this scenario. Be fair, day after day, and I would observe. And uh, Brother Pitts had a particular notion and revelation from God. Not for the church, we're not talking about the church now. We're not talking about the revelation now. I'm mean, a person. But now, uh, but in all these years, I've never seen him on that road before. I definitely have not. And so he was there, and uh, he was preparing himself in an unusual way. Maybe God had moved on him to re examine his life, every detail, because when we get before God, there'll be no tolerance. He mean, you have your on the way. God is giving, forgiving God, God works for God. But when you get before God, God will judge you out. He will judge you just as you are. Not what you wish to be, not what you are trying to be, but what you are indeed. And so uh, I would observe Brother Pitts. And uh, when I go there, he was laying, he was in the bed, and he would have his Bible, his notebook, and perhaps maybe a short, <laughs> in a bed with him. And he would examine himself. I know what it's all about. I've dealt with 
kid to know what I'm doing. And so, uh, and uh, he was so sober, not excited. There was a calmness that, uh, that uh, took him over, that made him unique, other than anything I've seen before, of that, of that magnitude. And so, uh, then uh, he, began, he began to uh, weaken. And uh, I said, Brother Piss, you want to walk. But, and, uh, but he noticed he wasn't eating. I said, you got to eat. But you know, he didn't want to uh, call him, you know, he said, I'm fasting. In your condition, Brother Piss, you need to take something in for a little nutrition here to gain, gain a little uh, uh, strength. He didn't look at his show. He was fasting. I mean, uh, turning over every stone in his life. Nothing in this life mattered. He sensed it. Uh, one day in service, he just he said, I'm looking over to eternity. Now, at that time, he was not down at all. But God had given him a uh, uh, prognosis, or whatever the case was, and he sensed it. And so, uh, then I, as the, as the thing progressed, I began to observe it more closely. And so, uh, he would refrain, we would talk very soberly. I mean, he was very alert and accurate in his speech. And so, uh, Brother Pitts would, uh, at that last few moments, well, maybe before that, Everything that he could think of, even in the past, that had any question mark at all, he built it. Um, yeah. Brother, I have I a little bill that I owed him, and I don't know if I paid him. I thought, oh, here you are dying, you think about something that is seemingly insignificant, mm -hmm. with everything that is Let me show you something you want, yeah. for how people so they got it. Tell the truth, tell the great chapter. Five, number seven, three. Second question, five, seven, if you please. The next one, I just Come on. For we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Yes. Not by sight. Not by sight. We are confident, I say. We're confident, I say. And willing rather to be absent from the body. All right, then. And to be present with the Lord. Yes. Wherefore we labor. We labor. That whether present or absent. Yes. We may be accepted of him. Go on. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, you know, every deed that you perform, consciously or unconsciously, uh, it registers far or gives you the judgment. Everything. I just said that, uh, you said it inadvertently, or whatever the case might be. Uh, it will register far or gives you the judgment. So Brother Pitt was cognizant. He recognized that fact. And because of that, I will do everything. Then I speak a word that, uh, uh, in haste that is not no substitute. Then I overreact when I was provoked. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, did I stare too long when the lady walked down the aisle? I mean, everything. I'm not overlooking anything. Well, I guess I did it constantly, but in a particular fashion. And now he's ready. And when he, when he left here, uh, he was as sober as a judge. No excitement. And uh, so I watched him. He said, uh, I don't want to make you comfortable. So what should we do here? He said, uh, uh, turn over to the wall. And so we did that way. And uh, of course, I'm not sure what I used to do. So, <laughs> so I picked him up and turned him over. And he said, I got you comfortable. He said, No, I set me up. And I know he said, uh, breathing became laborious. And so uh, I did not know how to took that. And so anyway, he took me to the point of two uh, semi-consciousness that was able to hold me there. And uh, so we began to uh, look more closely and try to interpret what we were dealing with. And so uh, he was motionless and laying there with the same uh, demeanor as he uh, portrayed in life. And so when we said, this is, I said, is that usual? That he would just to that extent, he said, uh, no, not quite. And so we became more concerned. And uh, after a while, we began to meet uh, chicken pulse, heartbeat, and whatever else we thought would be an indication of life and death. 
So uh, anyway, um, we got the response. Got the response. Then I began to reflect on his uh, demeanor for these last several months. Of course, not this is uh, all together, but this was something uh, more than the ordinary. He was a close liver all the time. He wouldn't even, wouldn't even, wouldn't even know this kind of thing. <laughs> but again, the way we this is the Brother Pitts was a uh, uh, nutritionist. In other words, uh, he would eat certain things and uh, all that he wanted when he got still, when he went to eat the little dandelion and some of the sweet grass and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, when I used to go to the store, they have some little uh, vegetables, little soft spots and uh, and the grapes are sort of changing color. And I uh, never give them to me. I said, Brother Fish, I think I need to take this. Brother, you can make a concoction. Oh, that, that might be part of this. And so we have a partner up there. One day, Brother Fish come in with this uh, special concoction and this is a recipe of the, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> and anyway, and so uh, uh, he said, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so uh, that way, uh, I mean, he made the no issue. The firm, the steadfast, the exacting, but with a perfect spirit. With a perfect spirit. He would not agree with anything that he had any question marks about. And that, that, was, and that was his total demeanor. So we so now here. The Bible said, I afford him to fight. Wait a minute. Now, not a good round. Mm -hmm. Get the situation. But a good fight. Amen. The fight is not a round, it's the entire venture. Mm -hmm. Entirely. In other words, the whole time of his oh. salvation. Yes, sir. When he uh, joined this particular army, he said, I fought a good fight. That means every round. And when you look upon a man here and cannot find any, anything negative about it other than some wild suspicion. But I mean in actuality. Nothing that you uh, could label as sin. You taught that, you lived that. You taught holiness. You thought you could live free from sin. Well, that's a sin. Well, that's why you're not where you are because you believe that. So here we are too. Anyway. But the, not only taught it, advocated it, but he could prove it. And uh, I told you that I, when we come from Honduras, and Brother Pitts felt that uh, his uh, calling uh, was uh, this chart and it's something that we went and uh, portrayed and bring it to whatever audience he could bring together. And so, uh, uh, Brother Pitts went to Honduras. I came in a little late. He had a, <laughs> well, we listened to it. <laughs> he had a, a, a group of little boys, maybe from five or six years on up. They were teaching about the and about the white horse and the black horse. You know what you know what real horse is. Anybody can pick your vision to. And so as we were coming Praise back, God. as we were coming back, um, Brother Pitts had a big old uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, my strategy of a duffel bag, good up with modeling looking, grotesque, and all that. And, uh, <laughs> And you got it and six security so we got to really forget to call all this stuff here on the common spot. We got the ISIS and the, all these people that are friend. <laughs> really friend to be <laughs> anyway, so uh, and so they took him in the room. <laughs> oh no, but he got it. You see, he was he was deterministic. In fact he he gonna get his point over. He took him in the room and sat there for a while. I said, wonder what he can do it for me. He's locking him up. So uh, I guess they had to open the bag and uh and, and look in the bag and, and he guess what is this? He left my chart. It was all about the thing to get explain. Three or seven seals and they let him go. <laughs> so he finished his course. <laughs> so are you gonna preach it? I don't care what you say, what you don't say. You just want to do to him. Are you gonna preach it with Listen, uh, now now I'm ready. Preparation is over. And I'm not the judge. And uh, now I'm ready to hear the verdict. Hello. I mean, I'm ready to hear the verdict. Lord, you know my downsetting uprising. 
Yes. You know my thoughts are far off. You know when I cherish any evil thoughts, you know what I'm for. You know that my eyes have been wanting. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm ready. I mean, no, no excitement, no explanation uh, other than I'm ready. And he sense me, he sense me. There was something about it that was compelling, that uh, it was more than the ordinary. My Lord, you follow me? I'm going to tell you something, God. Uh, it's not like you think it is before God judges you. Oh, no. See, God is going to judge you like you are, not like you wish to be, not as you talk about, oh, not as you intend to be, but as you are. Oh, God, help, Lord, help. And you don't know anything in heaven. You know that. Well, if, if so, that would be like Jackson and, and uh, Detroit and all the other things. If let all these people that are sitting and doing everything better than you. But so, you, you can't get rid of it. Well, then pray you'll get rid of it. There's no word between you and heaven to get rid of it. So if you don't live it here, then you don't live it at all. And you don't get heaven. But the Bible refers to us as an innumerable common of angels. In other words, you are evangelic now and you'll be able to get heaven to you can, can you imagine uh, the, the angels squabbling over this that, mm. gossiping, or doing all that kind of thing, but that's what you can't do in order to help Or lusting, or overreacting when you have a vote, and neither can you. That's it. You will be an angelic now, and you'll be if you, uh, if you get where you're going. That's the situation. So do you want this the situation? We're thankful. Yeah. Uh, this congregation, this town and this nation will be uh, immeasurably poorer because of the loss of little pits. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, ir irreplaceable. I've seen thousands and hundreds of big conventions and whatnot. I spoke at conventions all over. But I'm going to tell you. Uh, but many times I've seen him this moment here. But to assist uh, one who actually portrays, not only portrays, but actually lives it. And uh, you can't gainsay it. Oh, it commends it, 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 it commend itself. Yeah. It, he he gives them part of that spirit to you. Yeah. And you can you couldn't doubt it because you, you can sense it. There's something beyond religion. Yeah. I mean, a religiosity. Yeah. Uh, just a lot of wild uh, uh, religious rhetoric. Red rhetoric. But it was more than that. And they can sense the fact that it was more than that. The people could, the people could. And as a result, uh, you got people getting saved, Hello. wherever. And, and, and all of the accolades and whatnot you've heard, uh, there are those who came to the church because of it. You know, yeah. Didn't always understand it, but there was something about his spirit that compelled him. Bravo. There was a compelling aspect to his spirit. Yes, sir. You know, and, uh, real, and, and he had a real, genuine uh, burden for his family. Thank you uh, yeah. remember my granddaughter. Remember the other elders. And, 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 and he was to forget it. You would get the nothing that's a cliche, remember this, remember this. That's a wild request. But it, remember that. And you know God would work. Yes, and he go as far as he had to go uh, untiringly. And we were gonna miss him. And I say we just have to trust God to uh, do what he has to do uh, to God. to replace him. Now, <coughs> now we're not gonna put on. You have a wonderful audience. Family, you have been tremendous. I mean, in fact, we try to relieve the wife any time it caught. She was incessant through the day and through the oh, night. Yeah. And uh, he almost to a point that she just could hardly go any further, despite her desire. And uh, but God bless him. We said, listen, you're going to have to have some with you. And we just need to see which one. You're going to have to have some with you. Because you've got to have some But she knew. And sometimes he might just call her several times at night. Not complaining, not complaining. Just her presence. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I tell the young uh, do you know that is an effect uh, that a, a real Holy Ghost wife can have on you that nobody else can? I mean, they, they clearly you don't know even all of a sudden. Uh, uh, when I get, I have been sick. I mean, painful. And that's the time. Pray for me. Right. And I don't know the occasion what she did. I didn't get the physical. I need consolation. That, that, that's what helped me. It's not uh, somebody who can make biscuits. What helped me is somebody who can enhance your spirituality. That's what it's all about. You follow me? And then, 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 and then
and they, because they are so willing to bury themselves. I'm talking about real wife. And I heard them that way. You, you don't find them kind of people in different voices. You don't kind of find those kind of people praise the Lord God. You don't second and third wives. Praise the Lord God. And I'm talking about TV young people here. And all these little things with 26 foot 4, amen, with blue eyes and, 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 and uh, pretty hair. And then a uh, broad shoulders and all this kind of thing. You've never seen this guy, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Then you will, you will be disappointed. God bless you, children. Amen. Uh, now we're going to uh, come to the uh, illustrations. Oh, here, here, here. Now, uh, nobody's not going to teach on this. Come here, let me give you a, a little a synopsis of what we're talking about. Bring it here, brother. This is Brother Piss charge. Yeah, we're not going to try to explain it, brother. Couldn't it work? <laughs> Just give me a, a, a brief. Hallelujah. Uh, now, but uh, now all of these have significant, I mean significant, and uh, and the, the prophetic, and uh, they will tell you something. We are living in those times. And you, you don't know what's happening unless God shows you. Come on, brother. He shows you the prophets. Come on, brother. The situation. Yes, all the way to the world. Yes, sir. No kid from the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the You know, to Because we promise to let the and just make the four Amen. Yes. Yes. All of these have symptoms. This, 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 that means spite of me. All this is spite of me. Those who say, I keep saying you must say you can't help. That's a beast. That's a beast. All of these. All of these. All of these. The, the heads of these beasts. All, all of those have. Uh, relative uh, significance. They mean something Amen. in the time which you're living. And you can't know otherwise. Unless you got the Holy Ghost, you can't interpret it. Lord, but Lord, I'm going to tell you, and you're a class of that, and, and we will teach our young brethren, and God will teach us how to prepare ourselves. Amen. That's how Amen. we know how to prepare ourselves Lord, and what we're dealing with. What we're doing. God shows us in every age what to expect. And what the crime would be like. Yes, sir, brother. And what the atmosphere would be like. My and what Lord. the people would be like. And the foe that we're facing. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, Amen. And you know what? I want you to prophesy here. What? About. Mm. Election. Then God is going to turn over to the truth. Prophet Paul, Prophet Kirby. Then we going to take us off into something God will have to destroy us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You really have truth to pray about God so God, I give you something, I give you what you want. But here we are. Just want to give you a little a synopsis here. Just what you see what it's all about. And uh, we'll go with this. I bless you. We're not going to try to detail all this because we take more, more uh, time than it is allotted to us. So we God bless you. Just we will see a synopsis here. And what all this was all about, when you make reference to the chart, this is really this chart here. Sleep within the world, whatever it was to say. You know, you may have, I don't know what you think about it, but I don't know what you think about it, but <laughs> And the book writing all this about it, describing it, and defining it, and all this kind of stuff. So God bless you, Shirley, here. And you, may, you may take a break.
Yes, Lord. Well, how you feel to get that the family and those who feel affected by this passing of his brother, when you buy the other wood, may the anchor hold. Christ, you get it, Lord. Add all his feelings. Gentlemen, serving as Paul there, please come forward. He served them also with sleep in Jesus, will God bring you with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them. In the clouds to meet him in the air, so shall we ever be with him in the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with this. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trump shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.